Hi friends! Today we will learn about fluids. So let's start. Now, what are fluids? Fluids are substances that can flow. For example, liquids are fluids. All liquids can flow. All liquids such as water or juice are called fluids. Not only liquids, but gases can also flow. So, gases are also fluids. Now, let's see various types of fluids in our daily life. The air we breathe. The air we breathe is a fluid that can flow. Air flows into our body and flows out of our body and helps us exchange gases with the environment. The water we drink is also a fluid. It is an essential part of our diet. It helps in digestion, excretion, and regulation of temperature in our body. The sweat that we produce. The sweat that we produce is also a fluid, and it comes out of our body along with some waste. The blood flowing in our body is another fluid. Blood is a very essential part of our body. Our blood helps to regulate our body temperature. Small blood vessels near the skin constrict in winter season to prevent the loss of heat from our body. And these vessels dilate in the summer season to remove excess heat from our body. Nutrients or gases are regulated in our body and transported to every part of our body through the blood. Wastes produced in every cell of our body are removed from our body with the help of blood. So, blood is a very essential part of our body. Acids of our stomach are also fluids, and they are very important because they help in digestion of many types of nutrients in our body. Saliva in our mouth is also a very important fluid. It starts the process of digestion right in our mouth and also helps in lubricating the food that we eat, which helps in swallowing down the food. Water bodies are another example. All the water bodies that we see around are full of fluid called water, and we enjoy a lot of activities in those water bodies, so fluid is all around us. Now, let's learn some characteristics of fluids. All fluids can move or flow. This is the first characteristic of fluids. You can always see water flowing through taps. Water also flows through pipelines and down the hills. Air moves around the wings of a plane. Parachutes move along the flowing air. We also fly kites along the blowing air. So, all fluids can move or flow. Now, let's learn the next characteristics of fluids. All fluids do not have a definite shape. Neither gases nor liquids have a definite shape. All the liquids and gases take the shape of the container they're poured into. Number three is that liquids are fluids that have a fixed volume. So, if you take one liter of liquid, and pour it into a container of 2 liters, its volume will still be 1 liter. So, liquids have fixed volumes. Now, in the cases of gas, which is also a fluid, they do not have a fixed volume. Gases completely fill any container they are filled into, no matter the size of the container. For example, if you spray a perfume anywhere in the room, the smell quickly fills the room. There is no fixed volume of gases, so gases do not have a definite shape nor a definite volume, but gases definitely have a smell. Now that we know the definition of fluids and its characteristics, we will learn about the particle theory of matter. It is a theory that explains the behavior of fluids, and the key points of the particle theory are all types of matter are made up of tiny particles. Particles have empty spaces between them. Particles are always moving randomly at all times. 
particles move faster and spread farther apart when they are heated. And all particles attract each other. On the basis of these key points of particle theory, let's understand the behavior of solids, liquids, and gases, out of which liquids and gases are fluids. Solids. As we learned, all types of matter are made up of tiny particles, so solids are also made up of tiny particles. Second point was that particles have empty spaces between them. In the case of solids, the particles are very close to each other, so there are very small empty spaces between them. In the case of solids, the attraction between the particles is so strong that the particles move but remain in the same position. This is why solids are tightly packed and do not change their shape and volume. Next are liquids. Liquids are also made up of tiny particles, but in the case of liquids, particles have larger empty spaces between them than solids. This is why the attraction between particles of liquids is lesser than that of solids. Particles are also able to move more freely than solids. This is also why liquids can change their shape, but the attraction in the case of the molecules of a liquid is sufficient to keep the particles attracted to each other. This is why liquids have a fixed volume. They do not spread away like gases. Next are gases. Gases are also made up of tiny particles, and empty spaces between them are very large. This is why the attraction between them is negligible, and particles can move freely along distances. This is also why gases have neither a definite shape nor definite volume, as the attraction between the particles is not enough to keep the particles together. This also shows why solids are not considered fluids. Out of the three types of matter, only solids cannot move or flow, so solids are not fluids. But liquids and gases are considered fluids. Now we know about fluids, their characteristics, and the particle theory of matter. Now we will learn about the different types of flow. Laminar flow and turbulent flow. Laminar flow is a smooth and regular flow of fluids. Fluids move in orderly lines or smooth pathways in laminar flow. In this type of flow, fluids move more quickly. Laminar flow of air reduces the drag in the case of a moving vehicle. Now let's learn some examples of laminar flow. Flow of blood in the vessels of a healthy person. Flow of a liquid in the pipes. Flow of air along the moving vehicle is laminar flow of air. It reduces drag in the case of vehicles and makes them more efficient. Now, what is drag? It is the opposing force or resistance posed by the air towards the moving or speeding object. Next is turbulent flow. This is choppy and irregular flow of fluids. An example is flow of a river down a slope is called the turbulent flow of the river. This rush and turbulent flow of water in the river helps to add more oxygen to the river, which is required by the aquatic life of the water bodies. Turbulent flow of the rivers and falls is enjoyed by the rafters, canoeists, and kayakers. Flow of blood in the arteries and veins with deposited plaque is also turbulent. If plaque is deposited in large amounts, it may block veins and arteries, which could lead to heart attacks and strokes. Now, let's learn how we can tame this turbulence. If we need a smoother flow of liquids, we need to control the turbulence. Here are the ways to control the turbulence. The streamlined shape of objects creates more laminar flow. This is why all fishes have a very streamlined body, which creates a laminar flow of water around them and gives them speed. All vehicles are designed in a streamlined shape that also creates a laminar flow of air and gives them speed and reduces drag. So friends, 
Today, we have learned a lot about fluids and the way fluids flow. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And if you want to see more fun videos, you can hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more content. Bye-bye!